Okay, so this is how it started. The year was 2003, a little while ago. I was hiking up Bertha Peak with a friend of mine when we passed a rather well-marked trail heading through the San Bernardino National Forest. We stopped a guy hiking on the trail, and he told us that we were looking at the celebrated Pacific Crest Trail, where voyagers would spend the better part of a year hiking through the roughest terrain, hauling everything they would need on pack mules, and leaving their lives behind. The whole idea sounded rather goofy to me. Granted, he got the pack mule part wrong, among other things, which I later learned when I interviewed 2002 PCT thru-hiker Mindy Dunham on my podcast So Dream Something back in 2013. I hadn't really thought of the PCT in that time. I also hadn't really hiked, because I didn't know anyone else who liked hiking. But hearing Mindy talk about backpacking solo got me thinking, why hadn't I ever tried hiking solo? Because... I've always loved hiking. Or so I thought. Okay, so actually, I've always loved hanging out with friends on hiking trails. My background in hiking had not been a particularly serious one up to that point. I had camped twice, both with other people, and I had always hiked with other folks, which meant I never hiked all that much. I wished that I had, though, and that just stuck with me. It wasn't long before I took my wife, Vicky, on a hike from Warner Springs to Eagle Rock, seven miles round trip. I'm ashamed to say it wore me out every time I did it. But between this and other local trails, I started hiking alone. I can't say I liked it very much. That wouldn't come until quite a bit later. Despite that, I told my wife that I'd like to try backpacking solo on the Pacific Crest Trail. My first attempt didn't go well, but then I still had an awful lot to learn. Only I didn't know I still had an awful lot to learn, because I hadn't learned it. Funny how that works, huh? 2016 my first PCT attempt, starting from the southern terminus, Campo. Everything that could go wrong did. I had a miserable time and swore I would never backpack again. This didn't last long, however. Within a few months, the pull of the PCT was too much to resist. And this, after just... 11 miles. What? Oh, right. 22 miles. I had a year to consider what to do next, and consider it, I did. To start, my first year was sabotaged by a couple of things. First of all, somewhere, either on a blog or in a video or possibly in some very useful comment from Reddit, I had picked up the idea that preparation for the PCT wasn't really necessary. Just throw a backpack on your back and start walking. And so, for my first trip, I didn't prepare very much at all. I took a few walks with my pack to make sure it fit well, but, uh, yeah, not very much preparation. Further, I had this mindset pretty common to me at that time that said, I could do anything as long as I was willing to endure enough pain. I have since learned that this is a young man's way of thinking. Now that I'm in my 50s, I can't just power my way through everything. I have to be smarter than that. Actual learning was going to be necessary. Actual preparation. I began early, really early, September. And I hiked, and I hiked, and I hiked... I hiked so much that by the time I hit the PCT, I was a wreck. Year two on the PCT began with a test run from Scissors Crossing to Warner Springs, which 
I foolishly assumed I could complete in two days. Actually, less than two days. Thirty-six hours. But I did it. I crawled into Warner Springs, a broken shell of a man, by noon on my second day. I hadn't slept. I had barely eaten. But I hit Campo shortly after that because nothing was going to stop me this time until I hit rain and freezing temperatures and a broken zipper on my sleeping bag. Again, I didn't sleep. In fact, I had yet to sleep a single night on the PCT. And I hardly ate. Again. By the time I dragged myself into Lake Marina, I was sick, broken, and ready to quit. But I knew I would return. Before that could happen, however, I had to come to terms with the reality of the PCT, the commitment I would need, and the difference between hiking and hanging out. I had used all of my hiking experiences when I was young just as an opportunity to hang out. Because I am absolutely no fan of being alone. I didn't realize just how much until last September when I took a road trip by myself only to realize how much I hated being by myself. I mean, look at this guy. He's tying himself in knots because he hates being alone. Even in the middle of paradise. Things were not looking good, I can tell you. That is, until one day driving up the 395 in California near the Oregon border. I pulled off the side of the road, entranced by the view, and actually found myself able to relax, just sit back and enjoy the view. I thought, if I can do that on a drive, why can't I do that on a hike or while I'm backpacking? Rather than power my way through another year on the PCT, by which I mean crashing and burning after two days, I may have found another way. My starting point was simple. I'm the world's worst backpacker. I get that. So what would I need to do to get better? And more specifically, how could my preparations in 2018 help after my attempt in 2017? Some of you may already know my mantra for this year. Slow down. This is the first thing I was going to have to learn. But how would that apply to my hiking? How would that help me sleep or eat? Because those two things are going to be kind of important. One thing for sure, I wouldn't be hiking the same training hike I took in 2017. Because in the summer of 2017, a fire devastated that entire area. Here are a few shots I took several months ago. Instead, I took my training to the Chino Hills State Park. With a profile like this, Chino Hills would give me lots of climbing and descending in a shorter hike. And that works fine for me because my plan on the PCT for 2018 includes shorter hikes. I can always increase my distance from there. Hey, so it's the end of January and I'm out backpacking again. But check this out. That's my view. Hi, it's February 3rd and I'm out hiking again. And look at this view behind me. Isn't this amazing? Doesn't suck. Look familiar? I'm actually sitting out where I took a break yesterday. It's February 4th. And I'm having my first break of the day for today's hike, where I stopped on yesterday's hike. One of the features on my hike is San Juan Hill, 
which stands at about 1,800 feet and provides beautiful views of Orange County, L.A., San Bernardino, Riverside, and just a whole lot of Southern California. Yep, that's me. So good morning. I have a rather stupid tale to tell you. And it has to do with me hiking with what I thought was going to be just a slight hangover. It's amazing how just a slight hangover can, let's say, be overly complicated by the fact that you're hiking with a slight hangover. Oh, it's just not fun. See, when I left my house, I thought, it's okay, it's just a slight hangover, it'll go away by the time I start hiking. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So, how gray is my beard? Anyway, this morning, I'm at Chino Hills State Park. I think the official name is Chino Hills Pant State Park Pant. Did I say that name enough? I just entered by what I will call the residential annex, otherwise known as the free parking. And the plan today huh, is to uh, really appreciate what it's like to hike without a hangover. Yeah. I'm climbing, in case you were not aware of this. I am leaning forward into a rather dusty climb. So why am I hiking with a hangover? With a hat that looks as goofy as mine? I'll tell you. Because today is perfect or near perfect hiking weather. It's beautiful. Overcast. 68, 69 degrees for our high. Right now it's in the upper 50s because it's about 8 a.m. Huh. Okay, we've leveled off a little bit. Anyway, so it's perfect hiking weather. And how often does that roll around here in Southern California? Next week it could be a Santa Ana wind with 100 degree temperatures. It won't be. Because today's February 9th and now we're just starting to enter what very well may be our rainy season. <sighs> well, see. Nobody's really holding their breath after last year. I mean, after last year, we got enough rain for several years. <sighs> okay, so now that I've babbled on and, and there are people catching up to me, I can see from behind me that there are people catching up. So I'm going to get them out of frame and I'll catch up to you a little further in the hike. Okay, so I just finished the initial climb, the first ridge, which is, I know you didn't get a chance to see it, but take my word for it. It's kind of mean. It has an attitude. Anyway, so why have I started hiking the Chino, blah, 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 the Chino Hill State Park? Why have I started hiking? I'm not drunk. Why have I started hiking the Chino Hills? God damn. Why have I started hiking Chino Hills State Park? There, I said the question. Great. I thought about it the whole way up that ridge. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so the place where I have been training the last couple of years um, burned down. It went poof up in smoke. Take a look, Ken. Put some clips. Now I got people coming up behind me again. Because I'm slow. So, uh, yeah, I had to find a new place to hike. And uh, this is hidden away in the hills between Orange County and whatever is on the other side of the hills between Orange County and this park. And... Uh, and there's really nothing to it. I mean, it's not, as you can see, it's, it's rather, 
uninteresting to look at, but uh, it's hilly and there's plenty of climbs. And at the other end of this hike, at the end of today's hike, I should reach a campground that I have not reached heretofore when I wasn't hung over, and yet somehow I think I'm going to make it this time. Anyway, if I do, you'll get to see it. So this campground at the end is where I plan to do a couple, uh, or at least one, uh, practice, um, practice camping? I don't think that's what it's called. I think that's what people are hung over say because they can't think of real words. I'm going to camp there. And, uh, you know, just uh, try and get used to sleeping, or just try to sleep. Anyway, before they get too close, those good folk behind me, let's move on. So you may be asking yourself, just how hungover are you, Ken? And I have a little story that illustrates. I was waiting until I had a nice good backdrop. This is uh, on another climb but it kind of gives a little good background there. So, after my last hike, I had a bit of a blister on my right foot. Whew. And after it had deflated, because I hate puncturing blisters. I mean, I'll do it. I've done it before, but I don't like it. So after it deflated, uh, this morning to be exact, I was checking it out and I thought, you know, I better put some moleskin on it. Slap some moleskin there just to be sure. And I did. I slapped a big piece of moleskin right on the bottom of my left foot. Good morning. Good morning. There's cyclists on this trail. So yeah, left foot. So after putting another piece of moleskin on the actual blister, I now have Lots of blister protection on both of my feet. What I was going to tell you is that I feel like my attitude towards hiking has changed this year. And if my blister story doesn't show you that, here's one. A few years ago, when I would go hiking, I would need to have absolutely perfect conditions. Not just outside, but uh, in here too. If I felt even the slightest bit under the weather, I'd be like, no, I'm not going today. I guess I'll have to sleep in. <sighs> There's that time when you enjoy hiking as an idea, you know? <sighs> and then somewhere between then and now, I went from that to being the kind of guy who says, yeah, I'm hungover, but the weather's good. I don't need I don't know which is the better way to be. So trying to get as much of the background in as I can. I don't know if it's my glasses that have gone foggy or the landscape. But things are a bit foggy. Mind you, uh I would say it could be my hangover, but actually I'm feeling much better. And and this is exactly why I came here today. Because <laughs> I was lying on my sofa this morning, I'd gotten completely dressed, completely ready, went downstairs, sat on the sofa, laid down on the sofa, and as I was laying there, I thought to myself that I should go because hiking will take care of my hangover. And I'm happy to say it did, but if you're planning on trying this, go for a, go for a nice ice cold Coke and a couple Advil first. I'm just saying there are easier ways. Ah, but it's beautiful out here. I mean, it's a gorgeous morning. It's about 9.30 now. The sun is barely even up. The sun is still in bed, as it turns out. Stupid sun. Anyway, 
<sighs> this is what uh, what I see all around me. Here, a little, little bit of this. Da -da -da -da. Got some hills with nothing on them. Welcome to Southern California. Hills with nothing on them. Anyway, I am now in unknown territory heading towards the campground. Don't know how far it is to go. Nothing, but I do know I'm making really good time. I had allotted myself two to two and a half hours to get there. I've only been walking now for less than 90 minutes. Not bad, as long as the campground is about an hour from here. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so I decided something today. I decided to embrace the suck what do I mean? Well, with all this talk about hangovers, and with my legs like jello, I swear to God, my legs are like jello. I'm so tired. Hangover. Um, but I decided rather than, you know, getting that macho attitude, just push it, push it, push it. <laughs> Which is often where my brain goes. Like, you gotta keep going. Be a man. <sighs> a little, uh, miniature drill sergeant that looks like the great gazoo in my head. Anyway, uh, instead of doing that, I decided, you know what, just slow down, take it easy, let the hike come to you. <sighs> and I think that's going to be my new catchphrase, let the hike come to you. Because, see, what I normally do is I just push it and push it and push it, try and squeeze every last inch out of the hike and end up just miserable. Whereas this morning, I've kind of eased into it, just like the way I've re re rehabilitated, rehabilitated my foot. I've kind of eased my way in. And this really ain't so bad. And again, this, it's a nice backdrop. So maybe I'll talk to you when I get to the campground. So, I got to the top of that ridge, and now I'm heading down to the bottom of the next valley. Here, just a quick spin around, spinnery do, whatever. Yeah. So, going down, which means later I'll be going up again. Not my favorite thing. But here's the thing, just past a hiker, I said, uh, so where are these campgrounds I've heard of? And he gave your typical hikerly directions with uh, this hill and that thing and this a whatcha, whatcha, whatcha. But at the end of the very convoluted directions, he said, should be no more than two and a half or three miles down the trail. Cyclist. So, I would like to propose that if hikers are going to keep giving directions in miles, that we start marking our trails better. I mean, what is three miles? Okay, yes, it's six half miles. Okay. Anyway, so, I just got to keep walking until I find these campgrounds. So, down there is the campgrounds. I don't know how well you can see it in this shot. So I made it to the most important part, the bathroom. Hey, I ain't kidding, man. That's, that's a necessary evil. Anyway, so it's been six miles to here. Today will be a 12 mile day, which is my longest hike so far. My foot's holding out for now. <sighs> But man, I am so beat. I am so tired. I am not used to this at all. And if you think about it, the first day I'm back on the PCT, I'll hike about 12 miles. Gotta get used to it. So I'm gonna go have myself a little lunch, and then it's back to it. So hey, how you doing? I'm uh, out and about, walking as you can see. It's two days after my hike. I hiked 
12 miles. Okay? 12 miles. The time before that, I had hiked seven and a half, and I thought, well, you know what? I'll increase it by just a little bit. 12 miles. That's like almost twice as much. So you may be asking yourself, why, Ken? Why would you have hiked 12 miles? Well, I mean, for one thing, I'm going to have to anyway, right? My first day out on the PCT, I'm going to have to do 12 miles with a lot more weight on my back than I had yesterday. Now, it's six miles there, six miles back. 12 round trip, okay? The first half is kind of a mirror of the second half. It's up, over, and down. Which is basically, I mean, if you think about it, that's the Pacific Crest Trail right there. Campo to Lake Marina, up, over, down. And then up, over, down again. Mar uh, Lake Marina to uh, Scissors Crossing, up, over, Mount Laguna, and down. Scissors Crossing to Warner Springs, up, over, down. So, uh, yeah, that's what it's turned into. Up, over, down, twice. But that's good, see, that's good, because last year, I don't know if you noticed this, but my training hike last year, which got to be about 18 to 20 miles in, in distance, not that bad. The problem is it, uh, it started out with a climb, and then a little climb, and then straight. Not great. But this one, this one I'm doing in Chino Hill State Park now, up, over, down, but it's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, over, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's lots of climbing, lots of descending. Long story short, I hated it, but I'm going to get used to it. I, uh, I hiked it with 12 miles the other day. Somehow I'm going to get up to 30. Don't know how I'm going to do that because my base weight, yeah, I got to tell you, it's somewhere around 30 pounds. I don't remember exactly because... It's February, and I know that the uh, conventional wisdom on the trail these days is if your backpack weighs anything, it's too much. Yeah, 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 whatever. I'm not worried about my backpack because that really wasn't the problem on the trail. It wasn't the backpack that stopped me. So, this year... I'm going to get a little bit more used to these miserable hikes. And then, when I start on April 30th, maybe I'll do a little bit better. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll still suck. But I'll take you along with me. So, three miles today, and I'm, I'm lucky I'm doing three. Yesterday, I walked three feet. So the sun's right behind me, and in this light, I kind of look like Colonel Sanders. Anyway, it's February 16th, 17th, something like that. It's a Saturday. 7.30 in the morning, 50 degrees, which in Orange County, California means it's the dead of winter. But don't worry, because I got my puffy. I'm good. I got my puffy. Sorry, couldn't help it. Anyway, I'm back at the Chino Hills State Park. And, uh, yeah, I'm a little cold. I'm a little bit chilly. <sighs> We're not bred for cold weather out here. We're bred for perfect weather. Anyway, after last week's hike, I'm actually kind of surprised I'm back here of my own free will. I was hurting for about four days after last week's hike. I was just hurting. Oh, there's that sun again. Don't worry, settle down. I'm going to be making a turn in a second. But yeah, four days. And I walked as much as I could during that time, but uh, didn't help much. 
and with my freshly shorn face, this cold morning is really cold. I forget what a uh, what a nice insulator a beard can be. So. What next? Well, in the outback. Anyway, um, heading back out to the campgrounds again. Six miles out, six miles back. You know the drill. Uh, today I'm carrying about 16 pounds. I've basically just loaded my backpack up with a whole lot of water. So, that doesn't worry me that much though, because I know I can make this trail, I made it last time, with 12. So, now I get to start increasing my weight, and I'm telling you, I got a hair right here. Anyway, I get to start increasing my weight until I start bringing my full pack Etc. 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 I don't know if I mentioned this last week. Wow, this is one bright sun, isn't it? I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but this is the first initial climb, which is so so very much fun. But uh, there was something I did want to talk to you about since. I don't know, since we know each other so well. But, uh, I hardly slept at all last night. I kept waking up. And the strangest thing was, it wasn't out of nerves. I'm used to waking up the night before a hike out of nerves because I'm like, I'm thinking about how much pain I'm going to be in, or I'm thinking about how difficult it'll be, or... <sighs> Thinking about trying to record a video while climbing up a hill. Not very bright. Anyway, that wasn't the case last night though. Last night I was actually excited about the hike. I kept waking up thinking, okay, is it time yet? <laughs> no, it's three in the morning. <sighs> but this is kind of new for me. Now, Keep in mind, I didn't start hiking solo until about four years ago. And four years ago, I, I'm taking a break. Four years ago, I, I, I didn't really enjoy hiking. I thought it was something that I should have been able to do. And so I hiked on that premise that I should be good at this. But, here, take a look out here. That's my view. But, after, uh, after realizing I wasn't that good to begin with, and allowing myself just to, just to suck, now it seems I'm enjoying it more. Go figure. So, I got, uh, I got five and some odd miles left to go. I'm sure I'll see you somewhere along the way. Well, hello. I'm uh, right next to San Juan Hill, about the halfway mark. And I thought I'd give you a little uh, Southern California geography lesson. You ready? So, uh, that whole expanse behind me where, I don't know what you can see. Can you see buildings back there? Because there are plenty of them. Well, that's Orange. Oh, well, I should say that's L.A. and Orange counties. Now, the fun part is, when I get up to the top of this rice that I am on, and then I turn this way, Eh, not a great view, but that, my friends, that 
is Riverside and San Bernardino counties. The Inland Empire, because you have to walk through these hills to get to it. They should build a freeway. That was the sound of me tripping over my trekking poles. Anyway, so this is just about the halfway point, and here's hoping I already showed you the profile, because basically what that means is from here on, it's not so bad. There's a couple little climbs, but it's not so bad. Three more miles, we're gonna go downhill to a nice little campground. I kind of like this hike. This is a pretty little hike. It's nothing gorgeous, you know, it's not the most beautiful hike ever. But for a training hike, it doesn't suck. So now that I've stalled a little bit, let's turn again and take a look at ye old Inland Empire, which again, I don't know, can you, can you see it? It's out there. I keep thinking about Vicky. If I haven't mentioned, by the way, my wife has been incredibly supportive. And I say that with a long pause because uh, she has been but I don't think she has any clue what's going on any more than I do. I was talking to a friend of mine last night. <sighs> no? Yesterday afternoon. Anyway, uh, I was saying that um, the PCT, what the PCT has turned into for me is my own journey that I'm taking along with a bunch of other strangers. Because the journey that you're supposed to take, the journey they kind of... Hold on. I'm losing my trekking pole there. The journey that uh, is advertised is that 2,650 mile trek from Campo to Canada. But it doesn't have to be that, right? I mean, in my case, my journey's taking well, upwards of 10 to 20 years. <laughs> I really hope to hell not, but I figure, you know, what the hell? Uh, no, hopefully it doesn't take any more than 15. <laughs> so, coming around this curve now, you want to see more of the Inland Empire? Nobody wants to see more of the Inland Empire. Not even people in the little empire. Did I mention I'm tired? Okay, now, see all this stuff behind me. It's so beautiful, this desert community. All right, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna finish uh, hiking down to the campground or tell you what, what, once I get the campground in view, I'll stop and give you a look. Now you see that area down there with the uh, trees and things? That's the campground where I'm headed. I'm about two miles away. Now my plan is to uh, do a little, do a little uh, backpacking before the PCT. Have I mentioned this already? I may have. My first backpacking trip will be uh, on this trail to that campground. See if I can sleep. Because remember, my major problem still has been that I have not been able to sleep in a tent, out of a tent, anywhere. Well, anywhere on the trail. Let's not get crazy. So, the thing to do before I get on the PCT is to figure out how to sleep in a tent. And, um... I may have mentioned the new air mattress that might help me out. So we're going to try that out here. And then in April, we're going to try it out down at Crystal Coves, down on the coast. I'll take you along for that. But uh, tonight, I'm actually going to... Here, take, the, take a look at this. 
that's this is my view tonight i'm actually going to uh pitch my tent yeah in my living room and uh sleep in my tent tonight in my living room don't believe me boop, 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 boop. tent or coffin you be the judge the whole point of these training hikes is to get me to a place where I can be on the trail for more than just a couple days at a time. Actually sleep, actually rest. You know, the things you need to do to be able to backpack. So my training this year isn't so much going to be focused. It, it won't be like I trained last year. Last year, I thought I had to backpack long distances to get ready. What I didn't realize was that I had to backpack uh, tough distances, not just long distances. You know, climbs, descents, climbs, and descents. Which fortunately, this trail has more than its share of. Uh, so, I won't be doing any, as many long hikes, but I will be doing... Uh, tougher hikes and I will be camping out more because that's what I need to be ready. What do you need to be ready? He asked. Leave your comments below. And there you have it. You've just survived another Ken LaSalle video. For more information about new releases, projects in the works, or even stuff from the archives, head on down to KenLaSalle.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and all around social media. Just as long as it's called Facebook or Twitter. Thanks for your support, as always. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, and I'll be back soon with more nonsense. Huh. I think that's it back there. So, with any luck, I've got the shot in view right behind me of the campground. <sighs> I'm about a mile and a half away. All my food reserves... <laughs> have been exhausted and so am I I'm tired uh, by the way this is the shawarma part of the video where you find out that Thanos is actually Bishop played by Tommy Lee Jones <sighs> enjoying it so far I kind of like how the uh, shade over my eyes gives you nothing but my cheesy beard enjoy so, uh, I, I, uh, I was ready to wrap up the video, and then I realized we haven't gotten you down to uh, the campgrounds yet. Granted, I'm getting close, so uh, once, uh, once I get there, I'll uh, actually... It's occurred to me that I haven't mentioned yet what happened after last week's hike. To recap something you probably just heard moments ago, last week after my 12 mile hike, we went out with a bunch of friends and celebrated Vicki completing her uh, work for her master's degree. So yes, my wife now has a master's. I'm married to a smarty pants. So we're out celebrating. And I thought I would um, give you a little update on how that went. It was terrible. What was I thinking? I bowled four frames. It was a bowling and pool party. Uh, I bowled four frames before I utterly pooped out wasn't my proudest moment, but I was very proud of Vicky while I passed out. So that's just a little lesson for you. Don't plan too much after a big hike. This is just a shot from the trail looking, oh god, I don't know, what is that, south towards the 91. It's just so pretty out here. You know you've reached a certain age 
when the first place you stop at any campground is the bathroom. That age, by the way, would be old. But here I am at the, I don't know the name of the campground. Ken, can you, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. At that campground or this campground and, uh, gonna, gonna have a seat here and relax with a little bit of lunch, a little, little, a little, a little, of lunch. I'm a little tired. So, what nourishment do I have? Now, here's the thing. I used to take breaks with like an orange or a cliff bar. That don't cut it. You need to fuel up. I need to fuel up. So, I've changed. A very small orange. A second very small orange. See? Ha ha ha. A cliff bar. That's right. A big ass motherfucking bag of beef jerky. Yeah. Probably won't eat the whole thing, but hey, you know, it's good to have. And another little orange for dessert. <sighs> so, that's my idea of snacking on the trail. I'm, I'm looking great, and you notice how my camera's like slowly. <sighs> I also have a whole bunch of water. Actually, I have so much water. I've got four more, two, nope, four more liters uh, in this backpack. I'm not gonna drink it, but it's good for ballast. So, when I'm done eating, check this out. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Hi. So, um, I am lying down. Whew, that is bright. I am lying down on this bench. I'm waiting for the shade. I don't know, you see some of the, some of this, uh, here, shade. Whew, over here. It's moving in. I've got a, uh, a band of shade moving in, and I'm hoping to take a nap here on this bench before that frickin' sun blinds me. My God, that's bright. Whew. Ah, there we go. See, I just covered the sun with my hand. Anyway, normally I would just kind of sit and have a little bite to eat or whatever. Not today, baby. Not today. Today I'm taking a little half hour nap. Just going to snooze a little bit. Get ready for six miles back over this ridge and home. So for now, oh man, for now, I will leave you here at Chino Hill State Park. And I will hand it over to me tonight in the tent, and we'll see how we're doing. I think somebody locked me in a coffin.